walk with me. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the I am, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, O Yahuwah, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Yahuwah, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts excuse me, are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, O Yahuwah, art most high forevermore. For lo, thy enemies, O Yahuwah, for lo, thy enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt, like the horn of a unicorn, I will be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye shall also see my desire upon my enemies, and my ears shall hear of my desires of the wicked that rise up like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the I Am shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing to show that Yahuwah is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Psalms chapter 92. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me and my seed forever, that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. A prayer of Abel. Yes, 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 yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, you are walking with Mr. Clay. I'm Mr. Clay, and we thank God for you. And also, even with a hand clap of praise, we thank God for those of you who have been with us since the beginning, and those of you that have been thereafter and here and there's about. We thank God for you, and we thank God for those who have just subscribed or followed. Yes, even just now, and we thank God for those of you who are about to subscribe or follow, calling those things that are not as though they are. Yes, we give God certainly the glory and the praise for you. Yes, God is worthy. God is worthy. Uh, you might hear me playing in the, big, in the uh, background that's uh, been tankered. A giant, a Christian jazz artist, but I mean, you can take, you can sublimate those things that they worship. They worship this whom they call the Messiah, or even they call God. They worship him more than they worship the Father. But the fact is, you can take those things and supplement them to the things where it worships the Father only. Even whatever you call the Father as far as in the norm, it's okay. Whether you call it the Nini Nini Tata and Zambi, or Yahuwah, Yahawah, Heya, yes, it's okay. Because we're going to know his name eventually See, they say they say their god which is isis is going to give have yet show him new name but the new name is going to belong to god I mean, we've been calling god so many names and we are convinced of so many things god's going to have a new name and we're going to know those things yes we are and those things are going to be well with well, we're in the book of Jasher, still in the book of Jasher, chapter 74. 74. And we're still talking about Moses. Wrote Moses reigning as king in the Sudan, as we know it today, the Sudan. But he was king over the children of Cush, ancient Cush. But these things is not talked about. These things are not talked about. These things are not, they're, they're not nobody goes into him and discovers them because this paints Moses as a black man period I mean call a buck a buck call it what it is as I see it I see the king naked he's naked okay this black man Moses king of the children of Cush 
There's no way that he was going to be of a different hue over the children of Cush during that time. So that just blows it out of the water. Yes. Out of the water. Yes, it will. Now, in the 22nd, we're in the 7th verse of the 74th chapter of the book of Jasher. Book of Jasher, chapter 74 and verse 7. And we know that Moses was a very lavish man. I mean, you have to realize Moses was put up. Moses lived a life of luxury before even he got to the children. When God called him to lead the children of Israel, he learned how to lead. See, this is one thing. God taught him how to lead. It wasn't man that taught him how to lead. It wasn't the Egyptians that taught him. His experience with Egyptians where has, where has he, God walked with him. When I say walk, God pointed out things to him that he should do. God pointed out how she should think. Even those great leaders that you should see today. I'm not talking about these democratic or these uh, authoritarian leaders, but I'm talking about those leaders that really meant good for their people. It's God that leads them. It's, no, it's just no coincidence. Leader, leadership is not natural. Leadership many times is led, a good leader is led spiritually. His decisions are spiritual. His decisions become, they come from the most high. They don't come from his being taught this and that and this and that. You notice all the corporate leaders and all, they take things from the Bible, from disciplines and the way they conduct themselves. They take it from the Bible and they try to mimic it, but it's only a show because when you catch them off guard or in their homes, they just like you. <laughs> come on, let's call a buck a buck. All right. Now, in verse 7 of the 74th chapter of the book of Jasher, in the 22nd year of the reign of Moses over the children of Cush, Latinus reigned over the children of Chittim, 45 years. And he also built for himself a great and mighty tower. Now, this was Latinus. Now, this ought to be still standing or part of it standing today. And he built therein an elegant temple for his residence and couldn't to conduct his government, and he was the custom, as was the custom. You know, the custom is to, your leader should dress better, he should look better than all of those of, this is why we put him up, someone, many, we idolize our leaders. And this is what leaders do. In other words, it, it, it causes even those who would probably have more than the leader, they would try to dress better. I should be your leader because I'm the better dressed, I'm the better looking. So we try to dress our leaders accordingly. Okay, but we do not worship our leaders. If they do not worship themselves, why do we worship them? We admonish them, we admire them, and we honor them because they, their intentions are toward who? You, the people, if that's the case. But anyway, this is Latinus. He reigned over the children of Chittim. Verse 9, and in the third year of his reign, he caused a proclamation to be made to all his skillful men who made many ships for him. And Latinus assembled all his forces, and they came in on these ships. These ships were not very big, because you're talking about they did not have the technology we have today in steel and, you know, in wood and all these other things. Even when Noah built the ark, he really had the aids of the watchers to, or some angels that God appointed to help him build those things. Now, and Latinus assembled all his forces, and they came in ships. These were like boats, you know, the big boats. And they're in to fight with Asdrubal. This is another devil worshiper of Angus. And the king of Africa, and they came to Africa to engage in battle with Asdrubal and his army. You have to remember that. When he say the king of Africa, this, this is denoting a certain country that is not really, it's renamed. It's a country. But then afterwards, the name Africa is all over. It has to be a country. I'm, I'm talking from just my hypothesis. This is nothing in stone. But either way, according to this narrative, it had to be a country that is renamed. We know it's not the Sudan 
we know it could be somewhere in the Sudan. It could be somewhere even somewhere. In, it could be somewhere in Egypt. It could be uh, a territory somewhere. Or what we know as could be down as far as Djibouti. Who knows? But the king of Africa. And they came to Africa and engaged in battle. So this had to be close around that area within Sudan and uh, these other countries that's in that area. And this is what's happening. Now we have to, now we could say, as Drubal, there's something written about him. I'm going to look that up. I've been looking and searching, but I couldn't find anything as of yet. And his army, verse 11, and Latinus prevailed over Asdrubal. And Latinus took from Asdrubal the aqueduct, which his father had brought from the children of Chittim. And when he took Janiah, the daughter of Uzi, for a wife, so Latinus overthrew the bridge of the aqueduct and smote the whole army of Asdrubal. A severe blow. Verse 12. And the remaining strong men of Asdrubal strengthened themselves and their hearts were filled with envy and they courted death and again engaged in battle with Latinus, king of Chittim. When we say death, we're talking about separation from body and spirit. When you court, court death, is that you know that what you're doing, you may die. See, death is an English word. It's not a name. See, this is why when you read the book of Le Revelation, his name was Death, and Death followed him. That's Nell and Boyd. You can tell that's just a big fluke right there. They didn't know how to interpret that. They didn't know how to translate that, so they used death. Death causes death. Come on now. This is an angel. He has a name. And he's there for the destruction of mankind or human beings in that narrative. Now, and remaining strong men of Asdrubal, verse 12, strengthened themselves and their hearts were filled with envy. And they courted death and again engaged in battle with Latinus, king of Chittim. And the battle was severe upon all the men of Africa. This is the country. This is the country. What it's named today, we have yet to find out. And all, you're going to go into all kind of things. They, they really don't know in, on the Internet. They're only going to give you scriptures or where things, the king of Africa and this and that from what I've discovered thus far. And you, you just can't get I'm whitey and right. No, you're not that. You're just like me. You just kept me from reading my answers from reading. Now we know how to read. We know how to look and investigate things and weigh things out to whether know that your ancestors were lying to us or not. So the thing is, Verse 13, and the battle was severe upon all the men of Africa, and they all fell wounded before Latinus and his people. And as Drubal, the king, also fell in that battle. And the king of Asdrubal had a very beautiful daughter whose name was Ushpesna, Zina, Uspesnina, Aspinizi. Oh, that's a hard one. Well, Us, Ush, Ush. Ushpezina, Ushpezina, yes, that's what it is, Ushpezina, all right, we got it, and all the men of Africa embroidered her likeness on their garments on account of her great beauty and appearance, you see a nice, dark, black, Sudanese woman, I mean, with the, just the little shells and gold and diamonds stringing from her hair, and then here you got, you know, the beautiful veils just putting the gold just going all the way down and her eyes just glistening white and her teeth just as white. And here she is just beautiful. And you have to realize they used charcoal back then, just as the Egyptians did. They used charcoal to do with their eyes and they didn't have the makeup as women have today, but she was beautiful. As I would use my imagination from the things that I've gathered. Yes, beautiful. And comely appearance in other words she was shapely she she wasn't fat she was she was athletically shaped you know with the features of that which becomes those of that region and the men of latina saw ushpenza pizina yes ushpizina the daughter of asdrubal and praised her unto latinus their king 
And Latinus ordered her to be brought to him. And Latinus took a Pizina for a wife, and he turned back on his way to Chittim. In other words, I got it, man. I got these fine women. Yeah, buddy. And it was after the death of Esdrubal, son of Aegeus, when Latinus had turned back to his land from the battle, that all the inhabitants of Africa rose up and took Anibal, the son of Esdrubal, the younger brother of Esdrubal, and made him king instead of instead at his brother over the whole land of Africa. And when he reigned, he resolved to go to Chittim to fight with the children of Chittim to avenge the cause of Esdrubal, his brother, and the cause of inhabitants of Africa. So we're getting into a transition here. It's talking about what happened in between where we're getting ready to go. As he did so. And he made many ships, and he came therein with his whole army, and he went to Chittim. So Anibal fought with the children of Chittim, and the children of Chittim fell, wounded before Anibal and his army. And Anibal avenged his brother's cause. And Anibal continued the war for 18 years with the children of Chittim, and Anibal dwelt in the land of Chittim and encamped there for a long time. And Anibal smote the children of Chittim very severely, and he threw their great men and princesses and the rest of the people, he smote about 80,000 men. Yes. And at the end of the days and years of Anibal returned to his land of Africa. <laughs> so the translator says, it might be, it might just well be. We have been bamboozled and pushed this way. There might have been a country in which now they named the whole continent Africa. It's in the book of Jubilees. So I adjure you to do some investigation. Maybe you can school me on some things as far as this country. What is it? What is it? Africa. We know that the children of Kush dwelt in what is now we call Sudan. Sudanese, very dark people, but very beautiful. Yes, very beautiful skin and women. Yes. And I, I can't speak for the men because I, I, don't, I don't get into that. Okay? All right. Give me a break. <laughs> But anyway, he smote about 80,000 men, and at the end of the days and years, Anibal returned to his land of Africa, and he reigned securely in the place of Asdrubal, his brother. Now we're in chapter 75, going at verse 1. We're going to delve into this for a little while. And at the time, in the 118th year of the children of Israelites, going now we're getting to where we're going to go, going down into Egypt, where there went the fourth went forth from Egypt valiant men, 30,000 on foot from the children of Israel who were all of the tribe of Joseph. Now Joseph had multiplied since his demise in the land of Egypt. Of the children of Egypt, of the son of Joseph, for they said the period was complete which the I am had appointed to the children of Israel in the times of old which he had spoken to Abram. In other words, some of you got to the point where, oh, it's time for our this and time for that. Did God say it was that time yet, or you just feel it's that time? Is there any scripture to tell you this is the time that you should make your exodus? No. When, God is, when it's time to make your exodus, God will send the deliverer to escort you where he wants you to be. If you meet the qualifications according to his law, statutes, commandments, and ordinances, and your love is set on high. Come on, him. Now, he says now, 30,000 on foot from the children of Israel. Okay. He says now, who were all of the tribe of Joseph, of the children of Ephraim, the son of Joseph. But they said the period was complete. In other words, you think your exit is complete. You ain't even seasoned yet. You ain't even got no, no, no discipline within the things of God. You don't even try to sacrifice. You don't even get a thanksgiving. You don't even take the first of your crops or your garden and you take it and, and, and you just say, oh, before you, I don't have all the things that I should have and just wave your corn or wave your tomatoes. Just wave them in the air unto the most high. Uh, you don't even do that. That's giving God your first fruit. I mean, you might say it's my opinion, but what is a wave offering? They wave it before the Most High. That's what it says in the law. You wave the first fruits. 
of your crops. Way before whatever you pick the best of your crops, the more ripe, the more you think that is sweet. Whatever you think that is good, even that of your lambs, the first of your lambs, you should be sacrificing them to the Most High of the first year without spot nor blemish. Especially those in your land where you can do these things. We don't have Levitical priests, but you can do them yourself. Yes, until God appoints and clean, clean up the children of Levi, you can do them yourself. Oh, the law is passed. No, 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 no. You're going to pass before the law passed. Let's continue. Okay. Verse 2. 75th chapter of Jasher. For they said the period was complete which the I am have appointed the children of Israel in the times of old, which he had spoken to Abraham. And these men girded themselves, and they put each man his sword at his side, and every man his armor upon him. And they trusted to their strength, and they went out together from Egypt with a mighty hand. But they brought no provisions for the road. In other words, you, 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 you wasn't ready. Only silver and gold. Oh, you, you just wanted to buy some silver. You got a few things of silver and gold. Hey, whatever, whatever. Not even bread for that day. Do you not know food is worth more than gold and silver? Gold and silver is just a means of trade. A promissory metal of trade. That's all it is. When you give me food, I have what I traded for. It materializes. Money, is. that's all it is. It's a means of trade. It's saying the government is promising this. If I give you this, and if you trade it in, you can get gold. Yes, you can. If you trade your money in, even this day, you can get gold or silver, depending on the market value. Per ounce or per whatever, gram, however you want to put it. This was the shilling. This was, it was a weight. It wasn't just a coin, a cheap coin or a cheap piece of paper. 2,000 shillings printed on a piece of paper. No, 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 no. It is why you had people with money bags and you had the money changers with the weights on the side. They were weighing according to what was the value of that metal to trade whatever, whether, whether it was services or food or clothing or whatever. It was just promissory of trade. You can turn it into jewelry. You can do what you want. You can buy things. You can. Uh, we, we've really lost the whole concept of this thing called money and precious stones because the reason why people in Africa did not even value gold, and even in South America, which was a part of, Af as we know of Africa, and Africa was a part of, as we know of South America. North America was a part of Africa as far as the north part of Africa. But the reason why they did it is because they, they did not know. They used it for gold. It was shiny. They could make this thing shine, and they could, they could use it for beauty and, I mean, adornment. I mean, it just accessories. It's basically what it was good for, and then they find out that it was good. They used to trade salt. Would you trade salt today? Because if you get water on it, it's no good. Where would shall it be salted again? <laughs> Come on, him. Understand money. Now, I'll just give you something to just put an electric shock on your brain so you understand about money. What is it good for? Basically, nothing. But for me to trade my food for your table out of my garden, depending on what you deem is your table is worth for food, that's real. That's real trade. I'm getting something. I'm just not giving a promise. It doesn't fluctuate here and there. Because I got a table and you got something to fill your belly. You see what I'm saying? But then when I come in between that, I don't want to give you no food. I'm going to give you some gold. Maybe there's a drought and I'm the only one got everything, but you got the gold. That gold is no good. Come on here. Let, let me digress. I digress. I digress. I can get into that. But either way. They brought, they, these people were not scrupulous about what they were doing. Not even bread for that day. They did bring in their hands for they thought of getting their provisions for pay from the Philistines. And if not, they would take it by force. Now see, this is unscrupulous. That's not even how you even conduct 
this thing. Now, these men were very, see, they were going back into the land of Canaan. Yes, if you are the children of the book or Israel, your land is from the river Euphrates even unto the, even in Africa to the Nile River. As far as Euphrates go and you cut across. God made it very simple, but you're a colonizer and because of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's made complex. That was the land that God had given Israel. Shem had the rest of it all the way down and over toward the east. Then you had the children of Ham going to, I mean, the west. You had the children of Ham going to, I mean, the west coast, yes, of Africa. And the children of Ham really went as far as California in the United States of uh what we call America. And but they don't want to tell you that point. All of that is Africa. <laughs> or, or what they call Africa. It was all one land at one time until God separated the land and the people. Now, let us continue. And he says now in verse five, these men were very mighty and valiant men. One man could pursue a thousand and two could rout ten thousand. This is what he's talking about when you heard that. Ten thousand. So they trusted to their strength and went together as they were. In other words, they left Egypt. But it wasn't time. So you can do your, your flights and it's not time. God's trying to tell you something now. And they directed their course toward the land of Gath. They went down and found the shepherds of Gath feeding the cattle of Gath, of the children of Gath. And they said to the shepherds, give us some of the sheep for pay that we may eat, for we are hungry, for we have not, we have eaten no bread this day. And the shepherd says, are you, are they, are they our sheep or cattle that we should give them to you even for pay? In other words, your money means nothing to us. So the children of Ephraim approached to take them by force, and the shepherds of Gath shouted over them, and that their cry was heard at a distance, so all the children of Gath went out to them. There was here come a bombardment of thousands. And when the children of Gath saw the evil doings of the children of Ephraim, they turned and assembled the men of Gath, and they put on each man his armor, and came forth to the children of Ephraim for battle. So this could be devastating to you to take an exodus when it's not time. This could be detrimental to your life, detrimental to your wealth, and detrimental to your health. You stay where God put you until God's ready to deliver you. He's going to do it in due time. You just need to stop listening to these people who listen to dark spirits or lying spirits that have come to deceive the children of Jacob. And verse 12, and on the second day, the children of Gath sent to all the cities of the Philistines that they should come to their help, saying, Come up unto us and help us, that we may smite the children of Ephraim, who have come forth from Egypt to take our cattle and to fight against us. Now you have to realize now, even now, there's war going on over in the land of, for the children of Jacob, the real children of Jacob. You know, and you have two factions that have taken over that land because of Deuteronomy chapter 28. They've taken over the whole land, not only of the land of Jacob, but the land of all of Shem, even more south. We're not talking, it's impossible that South Africa should be even mentioned in that part, but either way. But God has a time. And when that time comes, he's going to deliver you from the U.S., from South America, from North America, from Canada, from the U.K., from Europe, to, from Austria, wherever his children are. If you are following his commandment statutes and not worshiping this Jesus as a God and whatever you call this Yahweh or Yahusha or whatever as a God, surely this entity or this man was just like those of Elijah and Moses. He was a prophet according to Moses. Moses was the one who should be validated and listened to because he said a prophet from among your brethren. Like unto me. Now, Moses was a king. He was a king over the Gentiles. And so this prophet, he's supposed to be a man that should be, 
He was a man that was after Moses. He was a fighter. He was one that was not afraid to live or die for his people and for those things that God have commanded him. Let us continue. And they told him in verse 14, Now the souls of the children of Ephraim were exalted with hunger and thirst, for they had eaten no bread for three days, and 40,000 men went forth from the cities of the Philistines to assist the men of Gath. And these men were engaged in battle with the children of Ephraim, and the I am delivered the children of Ephraim into the hands of the Philistines, and they smote all the children of Ephraim, who all had gone forth from Egypt. None were remaining but ten men who had run away from engagement. For this evil from the I am against the children of Ephraim, for they transgressed the word of the I am in going forth from Egypt before the period had arrived. You don't know when God's going to deliver you. Don't you go over there in Africa to South Africa to Kenya and all these other places thinking that this is the promised land. It's not. When God delivers you, he will deliver you with a strong hand and subdue everything around you and make them give you gifts just as he did the children of Israel during this time also. They laugh, they mock and everything, but wait till God gets through. Look at how they can't even help from warring with each other. And watch God. That's all you got to do. Be confident in the Most High. And they smote all the children of Ephraim and all who had gone forth from Egypt and none were remaining but ten men. Killed all of them because they did not believe God. They did not wait on God. Wait on the Lord or on the Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahusha or whatever you want to call it. Wait on the Most High. Wait on him. Whether you, you can wait on him in the grave, you can wait, wait while you're living, but he's going to deliver with a strong hand his people into the land in which they belong. Who had run away from engagement? For this evil was from the I am against the children of Israel, for they had transgressed the word of the I am in going forth from Egypt before the period had arrived, which the I am in the days of old have appointed Israel. And of the Philistines, there fell a great many, about 20,000 men, and their brethren carried them and buried them in their cities. And the slain children of Israel remained forsaken in the valley of Gath. God was angry. He was angry at them. They were in the valley of Gath for many days and years and were not brought to bearer. And the valley was filled with men bones because they did not believe. We're going to stop there. But they did not believe God. They took it upon themselves. Trust in the I am with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Read that 37th chapter of Psalm very thoroughly. You don't step before God. God don't walk beside you. You follow God. You might walk beside your, your idol Jesus or whatever you want to call it. Or your, your, your Hawashai or your Yahusha. But you walk. Behind God, you follow God as dear children. Even in your New Testament, it says that. It didn't say walk beside God or God's going to walk beside you. That's pagan. You are nothing to be compared with God. Nothing. Who are you that death should become you? Who are you that you should not get hurt or maimed or, or, or eradicated? You are nothing. And then when this happens to you, you're hollering. Oh, heal me, God. Heal. As soon as you get healed, you're back to the same things you were at before, as the Satan said to God before. See, this thing is more spirit. This is spirituality. At its 100% spirituality. You listen to what I'm saying. As we follow the books, we're in the spiritual things. Stop trying to follow men, but follow God. You walk behind God. You watch for his leading. Don't walk beside God or God's walking, God's behind me, taking care of my back. He got my back. God ain't got your back because behind God there is nothing. It's all subdued. When he walks, the earth shakes. When he, when he moves, there's a fire behind him devouring all your enemies. There's nothing behind the most high. And if you're following, there's nothing behind you but just memories, and you need to dismiss those too because it's going to cause you harm and danger. Yes, 
And with that, I can keep going, but either way. And with that, we're going to say peace and shalom. Walk with me. Walk with me.